Hi, my name is Marty Major with FLIR Security's TCX Training Department. We're here today to talk about a, an easy and simple way to add a camera via the wizard. So if we come down over here in Admin Center, you can see on the left-hand side on my sidebar, the last section on the bottom of the sidebar is the wizards section. And if I click my little button next to there, I have a couple of choices. We have our quick config wizard, our copy config, our user group wizard, but we're gonna, what we're going to use today is the camera wizard itself. So let's go ahead and open up the camera wizard. And the reason I like the camera wizard is it sort of walks you right through the process itself. Now again, there are many ways to add cameras to the system. If you have an existing number of cameras and you're just going to add one or two more, maybe the camera wizard is a little bit of overkill, right? Because you could just bring them in via discovery and copy some of the configurations you currently have in your system to the cameras that you're adding. However, today we are going to talk about the camera wizard, and there's a number of reasons why you might want to use it. The reason I do like it is because it walks you right through each and every one of the settings when you're setting up your camera, and uh, that's the way to sort of learn how to do it. So if we just go to Next from the welcome screen, you'll notice Discovery is one of the first options. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Start. I have an Axis uh, M5014, I believe. There she is. Uh, I've already got two aerial cameras in the system, as you can see here in the dashboard on the left-hand side. But I've got my access camera. It's the only other one that I have available now, so I'm just going to hit Stop and highlight the camera itself and hit Next. Once I uh, choose Next, I'm uh, left with choices for the archivers to attach it to. Now, in my system, I only have one archiver. Again, you could probably see that over here on the interactive dashboard right here in Admin Center behind the camera wizard. Uh, so that is going to be my only choice. But if I had more than one, uh, I would be able to uh, choose which archiver to attach it to. And I'm just going to attach it to the Training NC archiver, which is my only one. Hit Next. And as you can see, uh, it brings it in. Here are all my total cameras that are available. This clearly is the camera that I'm bringing in. These two already exist in the system. So I'm just going to hit Next. And for general settings, uh, I could change the name of the camera, put a description in here that's going to show up in um, Admin Center. Uh, I could enable the on-screen display, etc. There's a number of different things that I can actually do right from the general settings screen, just like we can if I were to bring the camera in and do nothing to these settings. I could simply go back to the camera right here in the video tab and make all of these individual setting changes or adjustments. So I can go next. Now, in a picture settings, a lot of times you'll notice the settings that are listed right here have to do with uh, something that we, do, we generally don't have to worry about with IP cameras. For instance, the saturation, the hue, and the contrast. Most of these things are automatic in an IP camera because it is uh, computer-based, basically. If you have some analog cameras, however, that are attached to um, uh, the system itself, uh, Possibly then you might want to come in here and set these settings and again We would use a coverage and a profile for each one of these uh, And again these slider bars would light up if I were to choose a coverage first uh, So for the most part IP cameras, we don't use picture settings uh, the only time we would use them is if we have um, Analog cameras attached to an encoder uh, which are brought into the system this way So we're going to skip right over picture settings That's what we trying to try to remember to skip picture settings unless it's a an analog camera uh, now the live quality of course we are going to have to set a uh, coverage for that first. So we're just going to choose the available always or daytime. I don't have any other ones in the system right now, but we could add as many as we like. But always is easy to understand. It is always encompasses all time. And then for our uh, live quality, I could use some existing uh, access profiles in the system itself, or I could simply leave it at custom and set my own settings. For instance, this resolution is a little lower than its max, so I can set it up to the highest resolution, highest frame rate. Uh, the compression quality, again, uh, like I teach people in my certification classes, this is the word right here we need to focus on, quality. And we can prove this, right? In medium quality, uh, we have a... Uh, a bit rate that's listed right here. If I were to up this to higher quality, what would we expect the bit rate to do? Rise, of course. Now, if it was compression, and that's what this uh, field mattered, then it would do the opposite, right? Because if it compressed it at a medium level at this bit rate, if I compressed it at a high level, the bit rate would go down. And as you can see, if I do this, it does not go down, it goes up. So the quality is the word that we're looking at uh, in this section right here. So I'm just gonna set it up to the highest one. I could choose uh, my own profile then and call this my Axis High profile. Good enough, hit okay. Takes a second or two to actually engage it. And now my live quality is good. I can go to the next screen. 
this is recorded quality. By default, with this box checked, it's going to be the same as the live quality. If I do want to make changes, maybe I want to live stream my highest resolution, but my storage I don't probably have enough for, uh, I could uh, unhinge them, you know, un, un uh, attach them together and have a separate recorded quality setting, possibly at a lower resolution if that was my example that I gave. So I'm just going to leave this checked and we're going to record at the same thing that we do our live quality at. And just hit next. Recording settings, of course, these are our retention lifespans for the various types of recorded video that we can um, record. Uh, these are just expiration dates. They have no bearing necessarily on the uh, physical amount of storage you have. However, if you come down and check this box, the forced deletion of expired recordings, as soon as it, the these types of recording reach the number that you put in here, if you check this box, it will physically delete them. It will start to overwrite them, even if you physically have more space available. So keep that in mind. Uh, manual record timeout is just the ability for uh, if a guard or an operator is looking at a live view and it's not being recorded, maybe the motion detection sensitivity is too low. Uh, this allows the person looking at the screen to click a button and start recording and override the scheduled settings. So we're just going to go in here and put always in here. We wanted to always record and hit next. Now, if we had some linked entities, some microphones, some speakers, etc., we could add them in here and link them right to this camera. Uh, we could actually even link audio files from a different camera uh, to the video of this camera. If we have uh, a bunch of cameras all in the same physical location, a lot of times people will do that. They'll use one of the audio streams, link them to all of the cameras surrounding the area. So there's not sort of like a one-off sounding uh, thing when you play them back together. Uh, and that's just because audio travels, right? And the farther away the uh, camera, if you're, each one of them was using their own audio feeds, they would be slightly off simply based on that. Uh, we could also link a map to this as well, uh, but we don't have one installed. However, it would easily be done based on our available maps that we have. And I'm just simply going to go next. We could now set up some events and actions. Uh, for instance, motion detection, to record only on motion, etc. Whatever it is we wanted to do, you can see there's a number of different things and events and actions, which is another webinar. So we're just going to skip over adding any of those things there. Hit next. This is the summary, just to make sure that we have everything that we want. And then we simply hit finish. And now uh, you'll notice the uh, camera has been installed, although you don't see it yet. You see Total Cameras 3, Recording Cameras 2. If I come down here to my video tab, it should have probably caught up to itself by now. And I can see the little red light on my PTZ indicator. Sure enough, it is uh, installed. So if I go back now to my system, as indicated by the uh, camera's recording, now my camera has been added and it is up and recording. For further FLIR security training, go to FLIR.com, then Products and Security. From the Security page, you would come to Support and then Training. On the Training page, we have it divided currently between in-person training and online training. The in-person training includes certification classes in Latitude and many of our thermal technologies. The online training includes upcoming security webinars, which you see up here on the left, and recorded webinars, which of course uh, continues to grow as we do the current webinars. But over on the right-hand side, you'll see our online training video library where we cover a number of different things in our repertoire. If we go to Latitude, you can see we have a series of Latitude training videos like this one that you just listened to, and uh, we are adding to this list, and it is growing fast.